Okay, so this is a video on morphological abnormalities found in red blood cells. Now, just before we begin real quickly, these abnormalities are pretty crucial to identifying and diagnosing many hematological diseases. After we do a blood smear, where we smear a bit of blood and look at it under the microscope, we can use these morphological abnormalities to diagnose several diseases. And uh, just in general, we're gonna be talking about changes in red blood cell size, color, shape and distribution. So if we look at these four images on the front here, the leftmost one has red blood cells of different sizes. You can see that some are big, some are small, some are medium sized. Um, we're gonna talk about what that's called and what that might be indicative of. We can also change in red blood cell color. Sometimes they appear blue under the microscope. Um, that's that second image there. The shape can change as in sickle cell anemia. You can see that sickle shaped cell in that third image. And of course, the distribution of red blood cells can change. And sometimes we see weird patterns like that weird row of cells in the leftmost image. And we'll talk about that one too. So first we have macrocytosis. Macrocytosis means large red blood cells. Now we measure the size of red blood cells with a lab test called mean corpuscular volume, uh, MCV for short. When this mean corpuscular vol volume is above about 100, we say we have macrocytosis. And usually this is indicative of a disease where DNA synthesis is altered, such as B12 deficiency and uh, folate deficiency. Both of those molecules are involved in either replicating DNA or the division of cells. And so the cells keep growing and growing and growing and they never divide. That's why we see large red blood cells in macrocytosis. The opposite of macrocytosis is microcytosis, which of course means small red blood cells. This is also measured with MCV, the mean corpuscular volume, and it's associated with several diseases such as iron deficiency, lead poisoning, and thalassemia. Thalassemia is a kind of a fancy word. It means a problem making hemoglobin, specifically the globin part of hemoglobin. So uh, the globin is, is like a globular protein that, that red blood cells make that create hemoglobin, which is the oxygen carrier. When you have a deficiency in the enzymes or in the, in the process that makes the globin proteins, you have a thalassemia. That causes you to make less hemoglobin and it results in smaller red blood cells. You can essentially think of red blood cells as like sacs or carriers of hemoglobin that, that essentially kind of protect hemoglobin throughout the bloodstream. So if you have less hemoglobin, such as in iron deficiency and thalassemias, you're going to have smaller red blood cells. And when you have a wide range of red blood cell sizes, it's called anisocytosis. The, uh, the measure for this is the red cell distribution width, RDW for short, red cell distribution width. And this is kind of a standard deviation of all the red blood cell sizes so that you, you, could, you can see in the smear that there is a high RDW because some of the cells are really, really small. Some of the cells are really, really big um, and they just kind of vary in size. It's when you have a large range of red blood cell sizes. That's anisocytosis. Let's jump into disorders of red blood cell color. Now, normally, let's go back to this anisocytosis slide real quick. On a blood smear, the actual microscope image, you see red blood cells and they have like a little pallor inside, a little white region on the inside. We call that pallor. Now, this white region comes from the shape of red blood cells. You could see in the left, um, the, the 3D model there, that the red cell is a biconcave disc shaped. So it's kind of like a disc, but both sides of the disc are concave, meaning they, they kind of cave in on both sides. That caved in region shows up as white on the blood smear. So if we go back to uh, disc discoloration of red blood cells, we know that in normal cells, the red blood cell is supposed to have about one third of its diameter be shaded white, have a pallor that is about one third the total cell diameter. That's in normal sizes, er, sorry, in normal red blood cells. When that pallor is too big, we call it hypochromatic cells. Um, when that pallor is larger than one third of the diameter of the cell, like these six cells on the bottom here, we call that hypochromasia. Hypochromasia means too little color. Um, and it describes red blood cells that have too little hemoglobin. It's measured with a, uh, a lab value called mean corpuscular hemoglobin. And 
it essentially, if this was a real blood smear, it would look like the same size cells, but a larger white region inside. It has less color. It is less reddish pink than the normal red blood cells. That's hypochromasia. Polychromasia means multiple colors. It's when we see red blood cells of multiple or unusual colors. Uh, here's red blood cells that are shaded grayish blue, which is what's most commonly seen. And these grayish blue red blood cells are often reticulocytes, which is the precursor to red blood cells, essentially immature red blood cells. So when we have polychromasia, we usually see these grayish blue reticulocytes, which are immature red blood cells. All right, let's jump into disorders of red blood cell shape. Now, first, before we begin, this term, poikilocytosis, means that you have a lot of red blood cells that vary in shape. A few slides back, we had anisocytosis, which meant red blood cells that vary in size. Poikilocytosis means red blood cells that vary in shape. We see a blood cell here, or a blood smear here that shows red blood cells that are of very different shapes. We can see in the zoomed in image, we have some teardrop shaped cells. That bottom one right there looks like a sickle cell. We have red cells that look like spheres. Some are kind of oval shaped and some still look normal. So poikilocytosis means red blood cells that vary widely in shape. And we're gonna kind of go through these different shapes and um, talk about what the shapes look like and what might be causing them. So first we have target cells. Target cells are called target cells because, well, they look like targets. Kind of kind of easy uh, to remember this one. They're also called caudocytes if you need a, another, another word to memorize. And it's related to liver disease, thalassemias, a uh, misshapen or a, an abnormal form of hemoglobin called hemoglobin C, and we also see target cells after the spleen is removed, post-splenectomy. Now, target cells look like targets on a normal blood sphere because they have, they're, they're like more wavy than normal red blood cells. We know normal red blood cells, if you look at them from the side, they look like this, this top series of circles here. It's like biconcave disc where the where each side of the disc kind of dips in once. In a target cell, we have each side of the disc dipping in twice. So we kind of see how that would form a target if we were to turn that cross section over and look at it as we do in the blood. Next here we have spherocytes, which are exactly what the name implies. They are red blood cells that are shaped like spheres instead of, of course, the usual biconcave disc shape of the red blood cells. I put a normal cross section at the bottom middle here of a normal red blood cell. You can see that both ends of the disc kind of dip in, they kind of cave in. This is not the case in a spherocyte at the bottom right here where the, where the cells are around, they're more spherical. On the blood smear on the left, this looks like a loss of central pallor. So that white region in the middle of the cells is gone in spherocytes. Uh, this is associated with several diseases such as her hereditary spherocytosis and autoimmune hemolysis. These are spherocytes, they're spherical red blood cells instead of the normal biconcave disc shape of red blood cells. Next we have schistocytes, which are essentially red blood cell fragments that look like the red blood cells were torn apart. So look, if you were to pull on a red blood cell until it broke, it looks like, or that's what a schistocyte would look like. And that's kind of what happens to form schistocytes. Uh, oftentimes when a, when a red blood cell goes by an arterial wall that has a plaque on it, either a calcium plaque or a fatty plaque, the red blood cell can shear if there's a sharp edge on that plaque. When you shear a red blood cell, you're gonna see a fragment that has sharp edges as if you just tore it apart. One disease that's associated with the formation of schistocytes is microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. And that forms red blood cell fragments that look like red blood cells were just ripped apart with sharp edges called schistocytes. We have a big one here, sickle cells, which are, of course are most often associated with sickle cell anemia. A normal red blood cell, as we said several times, looks like a biconcave disc. If you can imagine a polymer, like a long stick of uh, a long stick-shaped molecule forming inside that biconcave disc, it's going to stretch that normally round red blood cell until it looks like a sickle, as you can see in that bottom middle image there. The 
polymer that forms is made of hemoglobin molecules. And there are a few uh, kind of factors, a few environmental changes that can cause hemoglobin to sickle like that. Uh, this includes low pH, low oxygen concentrations, and high temperatures. Um, the, the abnormal hemoglobin that causes sickling is actually a single point mutation in the gene that makes hemoglobin. And when hemoglobin forms these long polymers that kind of stretch out and bend that cell, it looks like a sickle. A sickle is an old farming tool. You could look up what that looks like and see that it kind of does look like that, um, that, that sickle. Now this sickle shaped cell does not bend in the microvasculature as well as a normal red blood cell does. And you can see that in the right image there. This is the basis behind some sickle cell crises. And this can be incredibly painful when these sickle cells block the tubes that are your blood vessels and prevent blood from getting to certain parts of the body. So sickle cell anemia is a very well studied um, disease. We, we know quite a bit about it. and it causes pain in people that have this mutation when it blocks blood flow to, uh, to, to, to parts of the body. Next we have echinocytes. These are also called Burr cells. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but Burr cells is, is easier to pronounce. Uh, these have projections and these are like little spiky projections around the cells. And um, in Burr cells, these projections are regular. So they're about the same size all the way around the cell. Uh, Burr cells are associated with renal disease. Similar to Burr cells are spur cells, and the fancy word for these are acanthocytes. Acanthocytes differ from Burr cells in that their projections are irregular, they are not evenly spaced, and they are not necessarily in the same size, and uh, spur cells are associated with liver disease. So let's go back one more time. Burr cells have regular projections associated with renal, with kidney problems. Spur cells are irregular projections associated with liver disease. Next we have teardrop cells, and this is pretty easy to remember because they look like teardrops. These are formed when the bone marrow is infiltrated with something that should not be there. So something like scar tissue or maybe cancerous cells or lymphocytes, or maybe even bacteria goes into the bone marrow, grows in the bone marrow, and of course, bone marrow is where all these red blood cells are produced. It's the site of erythropoiesis. So if there's something invading the bone marrow, it's going to malform the shape of the red blood cells that come out and make teardrop cells. Next, we have a couple diseases associated with a red blood cell distribution. Um, first, we have this French word, rouleau, or rouleau. Um, it's, it's, it's literally like a linear stack of red blood cells. Rouleau means like a roll in, in, in French, like a, like a stack of coins. Um, and you can kind of see this formation on the blood smear. The red blood cells are stacked in a line like that. Now, why does this happen? Usually, red blood cells have a surface charge on their outer membranes that keep them from sticking together. This means that they have a similar surface charge that kind of keeps them separate. So that's why in all the previous blood smears, none of the red cells were, were touching, usually. When you have too many antibodies, too many immunoglobulins that neutralize these charges, the red blood cells can attract each other with charge-charge interactions that were usually repelling each other, and then they form these long stacks, these rouleaux. Next, we have agglutination, which is similar to rouleau, but much less orderly. This is when a bunch of red blood cells form big aggregates, big stacks, and come together and touch and overlap and are all over the place next to each other. They collect in clumps, and it looks very disorderly. It's not in a straight line like in rouleau. It's a big pile, a big aggregate of red blood cells. This occurs when red blood cells are coated with IgM, which is a type of is a type of antibody. It's a pentamer, so it's a large type of antibody that has five binding sites, and it's large enough to bridge the red blood cells together to cause this aggregation um, seen in agglutinated red blood cells. Now we have one miscellaneous condition of red blood cells that I figured I'd throw in there. This is the Howell Jolly bodies. Howell Jolly bodies are they on the blood smear they look like small purple dots that um that are inside the red blood cells it's usually one howell jolly body per red blood cell this 
uh, you start seeing this after the spleen is removed from the body or if the spleen is not functioning properly. So if you have like a splenic infarction, which means the spleen is small and, and not working, or if your spleen is otherwise just non-functional, you're going to have how old jolly bodies. Now, what are these little purple dots? They're actually remnants of nucleic acids. They are nucleic acids that normally would have been um, collected in the spleen and reintegrated into the body, but instead they were released and they form these, these aggregates, these insoluble uh, bodies that, that collect in the red blood cells. These are nucleic acids that form how old jolly bodies.